In this video, we're going to do another step-by-step -step, uh, example titration calculation. This time, we're going to be doing one at the equivalence point. Here, we're going to do an ice table with the conjugate species of whatever our starting weak acid or base was. And we have to do um, some adjustments of both the k-values and the molarity. Let's get to it. 25 milliliters of 0.0125 molar HClO hypochlorous acid is titrated with 0.0200 molar NaOH to the equivalence point. What is the final pH? The pKa of HClO is 7.54. Well, first we're going to calculate the new molarity of ClO minus using the total solution volume. We're then going to convert that Ka to a Kb. We will then set up and solve an ice table to get the equilibrium hydroxide molarity. And then from that, we will calculate the pH. What has happened at this point is all of our HClO has reacted with OH- to become ClO-. This is the only weak species that is present in the flask at this moment. And all of that ClO- came from the original HClO. We're going to do a little solution stoichiometry, converting our volume of beginning HClO uh, from milliliters to liters, liters to moles of HClO, then moles of HClO to moles of ClO minus. We have 3.12 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of ClO minus currently in the flask. We then need to figure out how much sodium hydroxide we added by volume because that volume increases the total solution volume, which adjusts the molarity. We can use an adaptation of the serial dilution equation to relate the moles of acid to the moles of base at the equivalence point those molar values are equal. We rearrange it a little bit to solve for the volume of base we need, plug in our numbers, and crunch. We have added 15.6 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. We're going to add that 15.6 milliliters to the 25 milliliters of the original sample, and now we know we have a total of 40.6 milliliters of solution in the flask. If we divide our moles of ClO- by that volume, we find that the molarity of ClO- that we will use initially in our ice table is 7.68 times 10 to the minus third molar. Next, we have to calculate a Kb because our new equilibrium is a base equilibrium. That ClO- is going to react with liquid water to reversibly become HClO, its conjugate acid, and hydroxide ion. To convert our pKa to a Ka, we're going to turn that pKa value into a, an exponent of 10. So 10 to the minus 7.54 equals 2.900 times 10 to the minus 8. Ka times Kb equals Kw, the special K value for water. We can rearrange this to tell us that Kw divided by Ka equals Kb. So in this case, our Kb is 3.45 times 10 to the minus 7th. Next, we can set up our ice table. ClO- minus will reversibly become HClO plus OH-. Minus. HClO and OH- minus both start at 0 molar. The ClO- minus at 7.68 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar, because that's what we calculated on the previous slide. HClO and OH- minus are going to both have plus x in the change row because they must increase. That means ClO- minus will have minus x here. It must decrease if the other side is to increase. Giving us equilibrium terms of 7.68 times 10 to the minus third minus x for the ClO- minus and x for both HClO and hydroxide. Well, now we should look for any simplifying assumptions. If you look, our initial ClO- minus concentration is indeed much, much larger than the Kb for this species. That means that our small x assumption applies, and we can ignore the minus x term in the equilibrium row for the ClO-. minus. We're going to take all of this and plug it into our mass action expression. 3.45 times 10 to the minus 7th equals x times x divided by 7.68 times 10 to the minus 3rd. If you crunch those numbers down, you will get your x, which equals the equilibrium hydroxide concentration, and that is 1.63 times 10 to the minus fourth. We can convert that to a pOH by taking the negative log of that number. 
that gives us 3.788, and we can convert a pOH to a pH by subtracting the pOH from 14. This gives us a final pH of 10.212. This is relatively alkaline, and that's what we would expect, because by now, we've flipped all of our original weak acid over to its conjugate weak base, and now that weak base is what's interacting with water. I hope this cleared a few things up. If it didn't, I am always happy to help, and I will see you in class.